if it's important to their lives, and we're only talking about major issues that do affect people, they have somehow figured out the right from the wrong. They may not all know all the arguments and they don't know what the latest uh, bills in the hopper in the Congress are, but uh, they know what's right and wrong and what's good. Welcome to Worth Quoting, a program sponsored by the Open Campus at Florida Community College of Jacksonville. I'm Carol Miner, your host, and with me today is Alan Kay. Um, this is going to be a very interesting program because we're talking about something that I think is misunderstood sometimes, and that's polling in America. And Alan, I know that you've had an incredible career. You've been a soldier, a scholar, a PhD in math, a scientist, an engineer, an inventor, an entrepreneur, an industrialist. And now you're the president of the Americans Talk Issues Foundation. Why are you interested in polling? Well, it goes way back uh, when I was a soldier at the age of 20 in Tokyo in 1946, the Army of Occupation. I did man on the street interviews for MacArthur. Uh, and I knew what was wrong with them because I had no training and there was no supervision. <laughs> but it enabled Ar MacArthur to understand how the Japanese people were reacting to the occupation. And that was one of the most successful activities. Then later in my career, when I had companies that were uh, developing data communications products for industry and commerce, we had to understand how certain industries worked. And the way we did that was with telephone opinion research, not to the general public, but to the uh, CEOs and, and the purchasing agents and such people in those industries. Mm. Uh, so I, I know commercial market research via the telephone is a very uh, valuable um, activity. And and uh, but you, what you're asking all the time is what do people want? What do they want to pay for? And so what we need to do in the public sphere is ask the taxpayer, what do you want? What legislation do you want and need? What regulations will work? We, we don't have the input from the public into our mm. political process. But the politicians don't think that the public knows. Well, in, in a way, they're right. Uh, it's, it's quite complicated. First of all, the politicians are, are immersed in a skewed uh, group of the public, that is, the special interests, the people who can afford and have the time and the, and the incentive to be close to the political leaders. Uh, take an average congressman with, with 600,000 constituents, if he, if he speaks, interacts with maybe 10 different people a day so he understands what they're thinking, he'd reach only about 3,000 in a lifetime. I think the math on that could work. Uh, so that most people, an, es an estimate of it is not more than 25 percent are ever really understood by the Congress. So what these national random sample surveys that I do accomplish is that they they pull out constituencies that congressmen never would interact with. And I'm doing them for Congress, by the way. But the same thing is true at, uh, at the presidential level and to some degree at the state level. But states are much better at this. But there's a very low opinion of polling yeah. right now because they don't seem to be accurate. Yeah. What makes yours different? Well, uh, we, we do several things that are different. First of all, the, the kinds of questions we ask, the subject we're in. I am only interested in policy issue research. What what people want for governance. I don't, I don't do any of the campaign polling or the horse race polling, and I don't ask what's your favorite color or what your attitudes are about things. So that, that's, it specializes that way. <coughs> then uh, what I do is, uh, since I had no professional background in opinion research the way I got into it, was to hire top pollsters. And, uh, and to, to work in politics, I, I decided to hire a Democrat and a Republican. And they turned out in, in 87 to then become the pollsters for George Bush and Mike Dukakis. So it was a place for them to meet, and we worked beautifully together. The rule was that every, every question and the analysis had to be approved by those two and others involved in the project for fairness, balance, and accuracy. And they had no trouble working together. <coughs> What's an example of a question that 
would have been seen by both of them that would have reviewed it on this fairness and accuracy oh. and well I, I think in that uh, pr presidential campaign it, it turned out that the uh, Democrats thought that the people who were them were with them on the national uh, uh, on military spending because they had been asking the question is a is Reagan's military spending necessary and finding 60 to 70 percent of the public saying no but the Republicans had been asking is the Reagan military buildup necessary and finding 60 to 70 percent saying yes they hadn't realized that of each other now the difference between the two is not just the dirty word spending if you look into it a lot of people well, most a majority of people think a fair amount the average is 35 percent of military spending is wasted so it, it was, the Republicans were more correct than the Democrats. They felt the buildup was necessary, but all that spending wasn't necessary. So that's, a, that's what you get when you bring those two groups so together. So what kind of question did you end up with? Well, we did 12 surveys in 15 months on, on national security. That was the purpose of the project. National security had been my interest, having been in the military, having uh, been in military research and development for 12 years, and feeling that we were missing many opportunities to to end the arms race in a very favorable way, uh, particularly in the 70s and 80s, and saying we're just headed down one course with, with no thought. And I felt that if we could um, get the presidential candidates to be aware of what people thought, because I had done some survey research on what should be done, we might be, uh, change the debate during that campaign. That part didn't actually work because once the uh, candidates announced, uh, they can hardly think again. They, they're always, their questions, their uh, positions hardly change. When they do, it's a very difficult thing for them to handle. So they had already had their positions, even though you had some new information. It was a very successful project in the sense that uh, the, the media used our results, and, and both Dukakis and Bush quoted from them, not, attrib not attributing to us, but that wasn't the point. And uh, the, the biggest users of our polls then were the State Department and the Pentagon. I, I gave many presentations to the Pentagon because they are not allowed by law, by Congress, to do opinion research, uh, ex except in very special cases, because it's, it's a concept that you shouldn't use the taxpayer's money to find out how the taxpayer thinks that you can influence the taxpayer to give you more money, which is sort of a guilty conscience that has some truth in it. But if you do what I do, that is, everything is, has to be made public, all the data, all the results made public, and everything approved by both sides, and even others with other points of view are brought in that, that are not Democratic or Republican, then it's, it can be opened up, and it, the process is um, in the public interest. I've got two questions, and I, wanna, I don't even know what, what order to ask them, because <laughs> what I want to know is, these polls were your own initiative, am I right? The, the I mean, they're not commissioned was, by someone, are they? Uh, initially, uh, well, first of all, they were commissioned by me, and I was a sponsor. I paid it. There was no way I could raise but money. But this is your others. interest. This is my interest. And uh, my original uh, idea was that I was on the policy committees and boards of various uh, national security organizations, and I knew that the organizations, some of them quite substantial, didn't understand what the public wanted. And yet, they they kept deciding to do certain things to educate the public. Well, you can't educate anybody unless you know where you're starting from. But, and the reason they don't do surveys is they're very expensive. But if you do surveys for all the organizations, left, right, and center, it's really quite inexpensive. And if Congress did surveys so that they would know what the public really wanted, of the kind that I'm talking about, it, it would be trivial compared to the billions that are wasted, even though it's quite expensive for an individual to do. So you must feel that the people's but, voice mattered. Yes. Le there's a very important thing that so far has been left out of what I've said, which is how do I take care of the fact that the public is very ignorant? And they are. If you pick, you know, pick up a phone and somebody asks you what's the qu capital of Guatemala, you're going to say, I don't know. You know who, who knows? You know? And even things that you ought to know, like... Uh, the simpler things in geography or history or science. Those kind of factual based Factu questions. Factual or current events, you know, what's going on. People are too busy in their lives and they're not prepared to take the test. So what we have to do to get this wisdom out of the people 
is to put uh, factual information, the basic essentials that they, ha they can form a judgment on the issue, goes into the preamble to a question, into earlier questions, and into the menu choices. That is, that we, we also don't ask them to invent solutions to difficult problems. We just present alternative solutions, and it's their choice. Now, the, we, the reason we can do that and the reason we sort of stumbled on it, because I didn't have this concept in mind, was that we're bipartisan. And we felt that if, if we have Bush's pollster and Dukakis's pollster saying these are the facts, we're pretty well covered. The, the media doesn't, uh, the, the national media who do their own polling don't quite do that. It's kind of expensive and takes more time, and they, they have to do a quicker turnaround. So we're able to put that information in. And when you do that right, it turns out, and this is the most amazing thing, is, is that the public's very wise. Their judgment is great. It's just amazing, you know, in view of all the baloney that they get from the media. And that the public's position on, on various issues is different from anything that you'll hear from the political leadership or from the major media. Uh, time and again, we've seen that. And because the quality of the question's not there and the, the well, citation piece is not there? Uh, uh, because we ask the questions in a very fundamental way with all of the choices. We're very careful about using language people can understand and it's not confusing. And one reason we can do that is that we go back again and again. If I were interviewing you and wanted to find out what you thought about something and I asked you a question and you gave me an answer and I said, well, I, that doesn't tell. I've got to ask another question. I've got to go in depth. And then in the end, I'd say, well, didn't you contradict yourself between these two things? You've got to go back again and find out anything that's ambiguous or confusing or contradictory. What if I don't know what I'm talking about? That's the, it could easily have happened that way as far as I could see. You know, when, I, when we went back, uh, you could have gotten junk that is like nothing to do with either position. But that's not what happens over and over again. I've done over 20 surveys. I, I have, the public has yet to fail in this. So ultimately what happens is once they figure out yeah. what's going on and, and you ask them a, an intelligent question, you get an intelligent answer. Yeah, but again, if it's, if it's a, a simple answer, that is yes, no, agree, disagree, uh, and, and you can cover an in-depth question by going back and ask if we added this to this policy, would that make it more favorable and so on. A typical approach we use is to ask a simple version of some proposal, uh, such as how do we get the energy we need new ways to get energy. And uh, then um, the, 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 the proposal is, is a way to get energy. Say. And so then I it, initiate yeah, those uh, or you give no, me choices? No. I'd, I'd say uh, is a certain thing like um, improved automobile efficiency a good way to get more energy. And uh, you, in that case you get a majority saying yes. Then you go into uh, arguments for and against it. I'm going to read you some arguments. Uh, this is read over the telephone to them uh, that are favorable and then some unfavorable. And I want you to tell me, and then we can ask different things. Were you aware of it? How convincing is it of, of you, to you? And uh, is there any one that's a clincher where you think that's the one that, that makes you decide? Mm -hmm. You do that, uh, and you get the experts on both sides who are giving you their best arguments, and they each agree the other is a fair statement of the argument. And then ask the same question again. You learn a lot about what the public thinks, what influences it, to what extent it can be educated above what it already is at. And you get, when you first ask it, you get the <coughs> off the top of the head judgment. This, when you ask it again, you get the informed judgment. The whole thing takes a few minutes. And, and we've done it with a whole survey where we spent the whole survey talking about uh, a subject. In, in, in this case, it was energy. And, and then at the end, ask the same question again. And what's amazed me is how small the change is. So that uh, you can rely on Well, these. that people really have already known why they think mm -hmm. uh, conserving gasoline is, will get us the energy we need or one of the other. The questions. common sense, real grassroots. Yeah. People, uh, if it's important to their lives, and we're only talking about major issues that do affect people, they have somehow figured out the right from the wrong. Mm -hmm. They may not all know all the arguments and they don't know what the latest uh, bills in the hopper in the Congress are, but uh, they know what's right and wrong and what's good. That's, that's a real good vote for the, yeah. of confidence for the people of the United States. Right. Yeah. You said uh, that your poll with this bipartisan thing is 
has given it a lot of strength, and you mentioned why. Well, why wouldn't the media, which is supposed to be neutral, be able to do the same thing? Or why don't they do well, the same thing? Well, I'll answer that by telling you what the head of polling for one of the major networks, I won't mention the name, said when I ask why don't you ever ask people questions like what were the lessons of the Vietnam War or at the time the Cold War was ending what have we learned from I mean we asked the American people to spend 11 trillion dollars to process to prosecute and fight the Cold War and nobody wants to ask them you know what, uh, what so what did we did we do it right you know what did you think yeah, what did you think and and her, and her answer was um, we don't do social research what is that other stuff that they do if it's the, not the social news? Research? See, it has to be on the news. Oh. What, what's the? It has to be question? timely. That's the way they think of it. Hmm. It has to be timely. It has to be event. They're event driven. Okay. Well, why are you interested in that question? Well, because I, I puzzled over why the people want this or that, and why they elect certain people president. I mean, we're all uh, totally dependent on this political process and lives are changed is for enormously important and I, and I've wanted to know so that the thing that started me more than anything was curiosity uh, and and the the particular issue that interested me in the early 80s was what people really thought about nuclear war and weapons do they really understand what nuclear war was do they really want to keep building these and you know about this because of your industrial background yeah well I, I worked on this in this subject and uh, when we f finally got finished it was a very clear story what pe how people felt about nuclear weapons and hadn't changed much over the years the, the um, people want to get rid of all nuclear weapons but you cannot get a consensus on how to do that uh, uh, there's a good majority of people who would say yes by negotiation we'll get rid of nuclear weapons but a, a portion of them would say only if we maintain our strength con by conventional weapons. So the, those two groups can't So the how is keeping us and, from... And the ones who uh, want to be strong and don't want to give up nuclear weapons, about, the country divides about thir in thirds on that issue. So th that's a very interesting subject, but what other subjects have you done polling on and uh -huh. where are you going with this? Well, uh, we've just completed a survey on... Uh, the whole federal budget. This is one of the things that interests me. Is can oh. you get, can you, in a half, it took 36 minutes average time on the telephone. We made people go through, first of all, the basic facts about the budget that you could, in order to reduce the deficit, you had to either increase revenue, including taxes, and cut spending, and how much were you willing to do, and then we'd let them know what, if they left the deficit, what that would cost the government in interest each year, and they had a whole series of questions on that that really establish what they're ready to do. Then we went into the, the top line itemized budget, eight revenue and 20 spending items, which uh, in fact uh, was virtually all of the 1991 budget. And which ca for each one, we said how much we're spending or receiving, the federal government is receiving in billions of dollars estimated for, uh, for that item. Uh, what the history had been in a 10-year period, just briefly, like it's increased about 10% a year for 10 years. Uh, what it meant to you as an individual, anything like personal income tax, we said what the average taxpayer paid from their total income. And th then we asked, would you like to cut it, increase it, or keep it the same? And if they said cut it, by how much in billions, or if you'd prefer, give it in percent. And, and uh, we went through everything. And... 95% of the people gave us numbers in billions or percent. If they didn't do that, we said, well, would you cut it a lot or a little if you didn't want to give numbers? And at the end of this long survey, we said, would you like to see a questionnaire like this on your IRS tax form every year so you could let the government know what your priorities were for spending and taxing? Uh, and 80% said yes. Then we said, well, if it was voluntary, uh, how likely would you be to actually fill out such a form? And 50% uh, said certainly, 22% uh, said probably, 11% possibly, that's 80%, over 80% mm -hmm. said yes. And uh, there's where you can see the alienation of people. They want to be led into the game. They want to have people hear them. Voting every four or six years or two years isn't enough. You have to label all your positions on issues 
Why isn't it enough? Be because you have to put all your thoughts on issues into one thing and appraise a, an individual and say, uh, that's what I want. But that's what we've done for years. That's what we've done for years. Uh, yes, I think we should have been doing this for a long time. Uh, we're using a lot of things that weren't available earlier to make this work. With. Are people more informed or do they want more of the action or do they trust the politicians less? Is democracy evolving? Well, I think people, we have a much more educated society, not necessarily in book learning, but much more aware of how the world works. I mean, we're running a very complicated civilization. More people now have to know many things for everything to happen the way it does in this world, even though it isn't perfect and there are a lot of things we all wish change. It works. And the people who do that, from their point of view, they each see a part of what's going on and they know it can be improved. So they get interested and frustrated because there's no way for them to express this interest and many people turn off. This is the Ross Perot phenomenon. This is the, what you see, the alienation with Congress, uh, the, the House banking scandal, the, the SNL scandals. So they want to get in the game? They've got they time to, to get in the game? Are, well, that's the thing. If you had the time and the money, you could start a demonstration, you could organize a million people. and you could write a bar an article, you could write, write a, a letter to the editor. All those things are, you know, there's so many issues. They're, they're too expensive, they're too time consuming. Uh, the only people who can manage to do that are the special interests, where it's really valuable. But to you're them. not a special interest. Uh, well, I'm... Or just, are you? I'm trying to give back to my country uh, something of what I received. I was a very fortunate person very successful financially and as you mentioned I've seen a lot and been involved a lot and when I came across this I felt that I ought to do everything I could to oh, make this. You had a gift. I had, I had a gift. I, I had an enlightenment. I saw a possibility. I mean this issue of can democracy work has been around since the early Greeks and you can easily make a case that people aren't smart enough to, to have democracy. I mean that's... You prove that's not true. And, and, and yet uh, if you do it right, if you use some of these techniques, uh, bipartisan, use experts on the issue, a wide choice of options, not just, see, politicians try to narrow options. George Bush will never mention an alternative. If he says something should be done, it's only his way, and he won't even talk about another way. Same thing with a Democrat on the other side. There's no common ground. And you have to say, oh, they're all scoundrels or liars. Or People know that it's not that simple. It's not that simple. And so they need some way of coming together. And our, our surveys do that. They, they allow extreme answers, if you wish. And uh, the, the, uh, I didn't uh, mention on our, on our other survey, the um, economy, the federal budget, mm -hmm. that, that people came out, uh, do not want to eliminate the deficit in one year but make a much deeper cut than uh, Congress has yet made. And Where? It, it, well, Congress increases the deficit every year, yeah. so that isn't hard. But even the, the talk about how much to cut things, the, the public is ready to do it. And, and, and it's thoughtful. It isn't, uh, you know, that young people want to cut on, soci on um, Social Security because the old people, you know, ex is spending, not, not the income, the mm -hmm. taxing. Uh, or old people, say, aren't interested in education and job training because they've made theirs. That's not true. They're, uh, they're, they're very thoughtful and, and considerate. considerate of, there's no intergenerational problem. Well, you've there. got this monograph called Uncovering the Public View on, Pub on Policy Issues. So you're interested in the policy issues. How interested is the government in hearing what you have to say? Unfortunately, or what the people have to say. so far, uh, it, it's been very frustrating. Uh, Why don't they want to know? They don't they think that's well, legit or they don't want to hear the answer? You have to understand, now I'm talking about Congress, that these people are suffering from information overload. They, they get a pile of mail this deep every day. They have a staff, a huge staff, the average represented about 50. Uh, senators are over 100. And by the time something comes to them, it's filtered out. Now you, you can... Uh, the, the, the people around them are doing everything they can to keep information out. So something entirely new and something that starts off by polling, oh gosh, we've got enough polling. Polls aren't any y good. Y y yeah. I haven't yet had 10 minutes talking to any uh, senator or congressman. Uh, 
and uh, but you've I, been I've, into I've made appointments, and I come in, and I'm sorry, I'm very busy, got to leave in two minutes as a vote, and uh, I think it will change. There's some very good signs happening. I How do you get the information to other people if you can't get it to the legislators? Well, I, we, every time we do a survey, uh, every, I, I have a report. Here's, here's an example of one. Um, mm -hmm. and this I one's on perceptions list. of globalization, world structures, and security. Wow. Yeah. And uh, people who want to get it can get it. And uh, most congressmen get it. Although but I it's think still a lot to read, isn't it? Yes, it's it's not easy. You know, when you do in-depth surveys, you got to ask a lot of questions, and um, you need analysis to explain analysis to, to explain why you've asked these questions, what you're learning, and it, and it's a fair amount of reading. It's a We're thing. almost out of time, and I'm not sure I've asked you all the questions. I certainly have asked you all the questions I want to. What other point do you want to make before we have to to leave? Well, keep an open mind. Don't don't. Um, when people talk about how polling is terrible, just always add campaign polling, and then I am more or less in agreement with you. Keep an open mind about public policy issue polling, about the things I've said. And um, we ought to have, you know, the, the media has to do more, it has to do more education, the schools have to do more. You, you can play a role here in, in making uh, students aware of what needs to be done. And um, I keep trying. All those Ross Perot supporters who have nobody to turn to now, uh, I hope that they get involved in some way because there, there are ways of improving the political process. And this is one way this of is, doing This that. is a way to do it. Mm. Uh, there are, are others. There, there's um, electronic town meetings, that, a whole other subject. I f uh, focused on this one because it's the most established art and there, there's all the infrastructure you need to do it. I can call up 20 organizations and, and say I'm faxing to you, uh, maybe 20 is a lot exaggerated a bit, practically three organizations, I'm faxing to you uh, the 20 questions I'd like to, you to ask and the sample size is a thousand and uh, adults over 18 and can you get this uh, done in the next three days? And there's, there's a whole question of quality and that sort of thing. But the answer is yes. And their telephone interview houses set up to do that. Uh, it's quite automated now. They, they use a computer assisted telephone interviewing where the interviewer reads from the screen so that there's no, you know, think, you just read mm -hmm. and you just key in the, the yes, the answers, no, yes. disagree question. Mm -hmm. And the technology can make this the, possible. Yes, and, and there's, there are ways of doing even better than we have today. That's a subject of a whole other interview. I'm afraid it is, <laughs> so we'll have to leave. But thank you very much. This has been Carol Miner with Alan Kay, who is the president of the Americans Talk Issues Foundation about public policy research. Look for it. Find out more about it. Sounds to me like it's going to be an important part of our evolution of democracy. Thanks for being with us, Alan. Thank you. Really enjoyed it. Thank you.